Hey guys, it's Venom coming at you with another video. Today we're going to be talking about a one bar Necromancer heavy attack build for the Gold Road update. Let's take a look at our character sheet. This is unbuffed. And this is buffed. So our spell and physical resistances are 29,000 and 25,000. We got over 60% critical. Penetration 78, 35. Weapon and spell damage 44, 86. Max magic is over 31,000. And over 27,000 health. We got all 64 points in the max magica and the attributes. Blue food, just max health, max magica. A lot of majors and minors. Thief Mundus Stone, this increases your weapon and spell critical strike ratings by 1982. Let's take a look at our gear sets. We got Sergeant, Lightning Staff, Precise Trait, Power Glyph, increased weapon and spell damage by 348. Two piece gives max health, three piece health recovery, four piece weapon and spell damage. Five piece, when you do a damage with a heavy attack, you gain a stack of Sergeant's focus for five seconds. Increase the damage of your heavy attacks by 645 per stack. This effect can occur once every second, stacks up to four times. For the head, we got a one piece light slime crawl. This increases your critical strike chance by 771. Sergeants on the chest, everything is all divines, all max magic enchantments. The other set we're running is Mora Scribes. This drops in the new trial, Lucent Citadel. This is the perfected version. The two piece gives critical chance, three piece minor slayer at all times, increasing your damage done to dungeon trial and arena monsters by 5%. Four piece weapon and spell damage, another 657 critical chance for the five piece. Increase your critical chance by 128 for every major buff active on you up to 1536 critical chance and increases your critical damage done 1% for every minor buff active on you up to 12% critical damage done. So we got Mora's for the shoulders, waist, hands, legs, and feet. Jewelry is Sergeant's with weapon and spell damage glyphs, bloodthirsty traits. Our mythic is Oak and Soul, also bloodthirsty, weapon and spell damage. While equipped, you're unable to swap between your primary and backup weapon sets. You gain Minor Berserk, Minor Courage, Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, Major Savagery, Minor Force, Minor Protection, Major Resolve, Minor Mending, Minor Fortitude, Minor Intellect, Minor Endurance, Minor Heroism, Minor Slayer, Minor Aegis, and a Power. That is a mouthful. <laughs> okay. All right, let's take a look at our skills. This is what I got on my bar. This is what I run typically. I do swap these up depending on what I'm doing. Gravelord Sacrifice, while in combat, summon a skeleton from the ground after 2.5 seconds, the skeleton leaps to you. Sacrificing the fallen soul within and mastering your necromantic energies for 20 seconds. Increases your damage done with class abilities and damage over time effects by 15% while active. Your third cast of Flame Skull deals its damage in an area and creates a corpse nearby enemy. A stable wall is from the destruction staff skill line. You slam down your staff to create an unstable storm barrier in front of you, dealing shock damage to enemies in the target area of your one second, and setting concussed enemies off balance for seven seconds. When the effect ends, the barrier explodes. It deals shock damage in the area. You could run this as an AOE spammable by just recasting it early if you want to. Our hot is the spirit guardian. Conjure a ghostly spirit to do your bidding. Stay by your side for 16 seconds. The spirit heals you or the lowest health ally around you every two seconds, restoring 2,776 health. While active, 10% of the damage you take is transferred to the spirit instead. Skeletal Arcanist. Unearth a skeletal mage from the dirt to fight by your side for 20 seconds. The mage attacks the closest enemy every two seconds, dealing shock damage to them and all other enemies nearby. Healing Contingency, this is from the Scribing Skill Line. I do swap this out again, depending on what I'm doing. This is what we have on currently. The way this is set up, you imbue yourself with the magical runes. For 20 seconds, these runes trigger when you cast an ability with a cost, causing a burst of magic around you. Heals you and your allies for 10,738 health. Reduces damage taken by 8% for 6 seconds and grants minor resolve for 20 seconds, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 2,974. 
This is the ultimate thunderous rage from the destruction staff skill line. Create a cataclysmic storm at a target location that builds after two seconds, then lays waste to all enemies in the area. Deal a 9,516 shock damage every one second for seven seconds. The ability lasts two seconds longer from using a lightning staff. Again, depending on what I'm doing, I do swap some of these out. Let's go over some of the skills that you can use instead. Your other ultimate is the Pestilent Colossus. This is a good way to add major vulnerability to all the enemies for 12 seconds, increasing their damage taken by 10%. So you can unleash a Pestilent Flesh Colossus to pulverize enemies in the area. Colossus smashes the ground three times, dealing 13,000, 14,000, 15,000 disease damage within the first, second, and third smash. Unnerving Boneyard is a good way if you wanted to add major breach into the group. Your tank should be providing that, but if you're running without a tank, if you're running solo, or you're just running through four, maybe four DPS in a dungeon or whatever, you can swap this out and put this on for one of your skills. This is going to desecrate the ground at target location, deals 13,761 frost damage over 10 seconds, applies major breach to enemies within, reducing their physical spell resistance by 5,948. Consumes a corpse on cast to deal 30% more damage. An ally standing in the graveyard can activate the Grave Robber Synergy, dealing 9,679 frost damage to enemies in the area and healing for the damage done. Underneath Bone Tyrant, Hungry South is a good spammable skill that you can run. It only has a 7 meter radius though, but this is a good way to deal some spammable damage and heal yourself in the same process. Slice an enemy's life force, dealing 7,500 magic damage. You heal for 4,514 health for the first enemy hit and an additional 1,505 for each additional enemy hit up to five times. After dealing damage, you heal 1,865 health every two seconds over 10 seconds. The healing of this ability scales off your max health. Necrotic potency is a good way if you wanted to generate ultimate quicker put this on for one of your skills again whatever you guys feel like using if you want to swap these things out go for it necrotic potency sap the lingering life from fresh corpses granting you six ultimate and healing for 1284 health every one second for two seconds per additional corpse this also scales off your max health while slotted your damage taken is reduced by three percent if you're playing in a group and people are dying quite often you can always slot this ultimate this will bring back several people at once so it's it can be useful in certain situations bring your allies back from the brink of death resurrecting up to three allies at the target location you consume up to three other corpses in the area and summon a blight and blast bones for each corpse consumed Blood Sacrifice is another way you can put on a heal if you wanted a burst heal instead of the, the one from the scribing. This is going to sacrifice your own pair to repair damaged flesh, healing you or an ally in front of you for 13,890 health, but applying minor defile to yourself for 4 seconds, reducing your healing received and damage shield strength 6%. You consume a corpse near you on cast a second target. So make sure guys that you grab all of your passes for all your class skills underneath the destruction staff skill line crushing shock is a good way to have a ranged interruptible skill that you can also set stuff off balance and it deals really good damage again if you want to swap out one of these skills and put this on as a spammable that's a very good choice to run Elemental Susceptibility is another way you can apply a major breach to a target. You can apply this to multiple targets. You just have to keep reapplying it. It's a free cast. It's got very, very good range, and it deals damage every 7.5 seconds. You can recast this early to just reapply the damage if you want to. Just make sure, again, you grab all your passes for your light and heavy armor. We're not running any medium, so that's not needed. You want to make sure that you grab your passes for your Undaunted. If you have these leveled up, if not, try to get these done. I'm a high elf on this class. Whatever race you decide to choose, just make sure you grab your passes for it. But I think for a magical character, the high elf is the best choice for overall damage. 
let's take a look at our champion tree all right the blue tree we got fighting finesse increase your critical damage and critical healing done by a total of eight percent weapon expert increase the damage done with light and heavy attacks by a total of 20 percent wrathful strikes adds 205 weapon and spell damage untamed aggression adds an additional 150 weapon and spell damage for the red tree, strategic reserve, you gain 30 health recovery for every 10 ultimate you have. Slippery, when you're affected by a disabling effect, you automatically break free for no cost. After using this effect, you become winded and cannot trigger this effect or others like it for 21 seconds. So make sure, I always like to give people a warning if you're running, skill caller peak, you want to swap slippery out. There is mechanics in that dungeon, you have to get frozen, and slippery will automatically break you free and you will die. So if you're on skill caller, just put on a different a different slottable. That'll be fine. Fortified grants 1731 armor, balanced vitality, 1400 health. For the green tree, treasure hunter, increase the quality of items you find in treasure chest. This does affect the drop rate of the item sets that you're looking for from treasure chest. So make sure you have this on if you're running dungeons or whatever. Rationer adds 30 minutes to the duration of any food and drink buff that you have. Meticulous Disassembly gives you back more materials whenever you break stuff down. Steed's Blessed increases your out-of-combat movement speed by a total of 20%. As for some other gear sets that you guys might want to use, depending on whatever content that you're trying to run, you might want to swap some stuff out. Boars, I like to run for solo and four-man content. If you are in an optimized trials team, you might want to swap this out for Storm Master instead, which is a medium armor set, and that's going to lower your penetration, but it's going to give you weapon and spell damage in return. Storm Master is a very, very good set, but again, you want to make sure that your trials team is providing the penetration debuffs that is needed so that this would be useful for Storm Master. But if they're not, you can run more. So it just, again, it depends on how your how your team is set up. If you are trying to parse on the 21 mil target dummy, that provides a lot of penetration for your guy. So Morris isn't gonna be your best choice for it. You, again, you would wanna run something like Storm Master for your parsing. You would also wanna change up your CP as well. Stuff like Exploiter, because the target dummy gives 100% up time to off balance. Or you would want to run like backstabber because you're going to be behind it all the time. The reason why I run the CP that I do is because you're not always behind your targets all the time in real content. And stuff isn't off balance 100% of the time. There's cooldowns. So, you know, the build that I'm trying to give you is for an in-game workable build for solo and four-man content or an A trials team. You can run Mars in a trials. It just depends on how your group is set up. But if they are set up and they are providing you all these penetration buffs and stuff, swap this out for Storm Masters. It's, it'll be the better set for that. Other options that you might want to consider running if you don't have Mars infallible aether also is a trial set and it is an excellent heavy attack set to run so if you don't have moras infall is right on par pretty much with it it is a great set to run this provides critical chance minor slayer weapon and spell damage critical chance it's the same exact two three four and five piece as moras the only difference is the five piece your heavy attacks deal an additional 900 damage to monsters Enemies you damage a fully charged heavy attack are afflicted with minor vulnerability for 10 seconds, increasing their damage taken by 5%. Other good choices that you can run if you don't have Moras or Enfowl, Undaunted Unweaver is a very good set to run, and that is also a light armor set. And it works whenever you cast a stamina skill that will increase your, your heavy attack damage. Noble Duelist is an okay set. I know a lot of people like it. I don't like having to be within melee range when I'm running a heavy attack build. I run a heavy attack build for a purpose because I like to play at range. I don't want to be point blank on the target. And a lot of the stuff that you run, you know, there's a lot of crazy AOEs on the ground. You're going to run up and stand point blank within, 
you know, a couple of feet of your target, you're going to get melted in, in, a, in a lot of hard content. So I'm not a big fan of Noble Duelist, though that is a choice. If that's what you like, sure. Um, for a craftable set, if you don't have any of those, you can put on Order's Wrath. That is another good choice that you can run, and you can set that up whatever weight and trait that you like. But that is a very, very good choice for a craftable set. So if you don't have any of these and you're just starting out, you know, Order's Wrath will work. But some of these are also pretty easy to farm, like the Undaunted Unweaver or Sergeants. You can just go into these dungeons and just run those on normal and be fine. All right, guys, I think that pretty much covers it. If you enjoyed the video, please like, follow, and subscribe, and I'll try to get back to you all with another one. Have a good one.